What's up? This is the moment you've been waiting for. This is the main event. Now you finna know why. Okay, now you finna know here is why the Michael Jordan, Kwame Brown situation is what it is, what went down. We gonna tell you the whole thing in one swoop right here. Now, Kwame got in there and talked about the elephant in the room. Let's see what he had to say. Nobody talked about the elephant in the room. They still protected me, uh, MJ so much, the guy they love so much. No one asked. Well, dang, if MJ was supposed to trade him from Elton Brand, which makes a whole lot of sense, uh, and that didn't happen, could MJ be the type of guy that bench this guy and put him through shit and maybe that has something to do with something? Could, could we now look at this whole thing from a whole different perspective? Oh, no, you can't. None of the reporters can look at the team that he put together the second year when he put together the old boys club again of all old dudes, no offense, around a young lion. You can't be objective, uh, nothing like that, huh, sports reporters? Now... We go to the beginning, good people. The beginning. That's how you get things done. You always go to the beginning. And I'm going to do what none of these sports reporters was going to do. I'm going to do that for Kwame Brown. And I'm going to do it for everybody out there that's a fan. So don't forget to subscribe. Hit that like button right now. If you out there and if you seeing this video, hit the like button. Subscribe to the page. Follow Kwame too. Kwame Brown Bus Life. Follow his page because we need to support people that's giving out the real, putting the message out. HD TV. You got a uh, ticket. You got uh, you got Chris Carlson. You got the boxing socialist. You got CP for the win doing his thing with his channel. A lot of guys out here that's the underdogs fighting for truth. But let's get to it. Michael Jordan was retired from the Chicago Bulls. And immediately, he couldn't play because he had surgery on his finger, on his shooting hand. On his index finger, on his right shooting hand, which really forced his retirement anyway. And he still had an itch to play. Now, Mike came back to the gym one day, decided to play with the Bulls and work out. Meanwhile, he was in negotiations with Jerry Reinsdorf about coming back to the Bulls, but as a part owner and general manager, he wanted Jerry Krause out of there. Jerry Krause was getting to the point where he's having health issues and was nearing retirement. He heard about that and was like, hey, Jerry's on his way out. I might be interested in coming on in. Reinsdorf loves the idea because he's thinking of all the tickets he could sell about Michael Jordan coming back to the Bulls. <laughs> this is beautiful. But Michael Jordan wanted to not be the general manager. It's not what Mike wanted. Michael Jordan wants not only control of players and personnel. He wants a minority stake in the Chicago Bulls. This was never going to happen. Now, Jerry Reinsdorf is not going to give up part ownership of what he has. Plus, he has investors. So that was a no with another no. But the general manager thing, they could talk about. Michael wasn't really interested in that. Plus, Michael wanted things to proceed right away. He's not patient. So, talks fall apart. So, Jordan started talking with Washington. With A. Pollen.
Washington is a nightmare before Jordan gets there. They're an absolute it show. <laughs> that is it. That is what the Chicago Bulls and the Washington Wizards were. They both were just a walking it show. So bringing in Michael Jordan would sell tickets. And Abe was desperate. And he gave him a minority stake and said, you can have your hands in on everything. But we're going to let you shadow the guy for, you know, come in half of the year. You get to shadow the guys. And then you guys can go from there. So Mike is in there surveying. And right first speech, Mike say when he signed is, I'm going to dispose. No, everybody is disposable. <laughs> Soon as he gets there, first speech, he ain't been in the locker room yet. And he's saying, everybody's disposable. No one has done the research. They never take the time to do with something that takes very little time to see. Everybody said Michael Jordan failed as a general manager of, well, president of operations of Washington Wizards. I, I disagree. And I've always disagreed with that. That's shocking. And I'm going to tell you why. I mean, he handled some things wrong, but he actually did what they required him to do. He brought in revenue. <laughs> they were profitable. And they were winning. See, listen. Michael Jordan got there. They won 19 games. They had all this inflated contracts. They had almost $60 million in cap. $60 million cap. And believe me, in 2000, that's a lot of money. So they capped prices at 16, 60 million almost. Matter of fact, I wrote down the exact dollar amount. It's $59,085,969. That was their cap. Okay? And they won 19 games. They had Rod Strickland making $10 million. You had Mitch Richmond making $10 million. You had Jawan Howard. Nuke was making $16, 15000000 million at the time. So he, they, that, that was the weight that they were carrying around. And guys was in there dogging it. Michael Jordan went into the locker room, cussed everybody out, and said, you think I don't know what y'all doing? I know what y'all doing. Y'all dogging it. And y'all just taking the money. And y'all just dogging it and y'all playing. Y'all ain't even trying out there. So Mike went in there and cussed all of them out. And they said, and why don't you come play with us then? If it's that easy, why don't you come play? That's exactly what Mike did the next year, didn't he? I mean, <laughs> it didn't happen right away, but it happened. So, first thing Michael Jordan did. Everybody knew heads was going to roll. Rod Strickland's agent knew he was going to leave. Uh, Mitch Richmond, they knew Mitch was going to leave. They thought Mitch was, then they was like, well, Juan's going to stay because he's making $16 million. Ain't no way nobody finna take it. You know, they ain't going to trade him. First person gone, Jawan Howard. <laughs> trade. They was like, whoa, I can't believe they traded him. And the next season, Michael Jordan had trimmed $52 million is what they dropped to. He trimmed $7 million off the cap. They were at $52,376,087. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about, people. He had already trimmed $7 million off of the cap. And they won 37 games. That's the year he decided to play. And his final year, 
they were down to 45 million 96,270. That was their cap. He came there, was at 60 million. Now it's at 45. You almost shaved 15 million off the cap, and you won 37 games. So you remove 15 million off of the cap. That's money to come the, the team saves, plus they earning in revenue and they winning double the games. That's production. Ladies and gentlemen, that is what a president of basketball operations is supposed to do. Now let's equate how this comes to Kwame Brown. Okay, now let's get to Kwame. Kwame Brown, they tried to make like a dumb athlete. As he told you, he was on the honor roll and had a full scholarship ride to go to a university, but chose to turn pro to help his family out and go right to the NBA. Because at that time, no collegiate players were burning up the court. They had no real media attention on any college superstars. And at this time, college was in a dog fight with the, the whole commission and the league about getting these players, leaving early, being able to go out of high school and go to the pros. It was, the temptation was more greater now in 2000 than ever. And this was going to hurt the college basketball program. So what they did was take out their frustrations on the entire, entire draft class. They went ahead and took out all their frustrations out because Eddie Curry, and this is how I know of Kwame Brown. Eddie Curry is from Thorn Ridge. Thorn Ridge is like right where I went. My cousin went to school there when football was the quarterback. Corey them took them to a state championship. My other cousin played football at Thorn Ridge and graduated there. Thorn Ridge is, is synonymous with my family, so we know. Eddie Curry, we all rooting for Eddie. High school player coming right into the league. You got Tyson Chandler, another high school player coming to the league the first time in history. Three high school players are going to be drafted within the first 10 picks. First time ever. Something like that is happening. Then they wrote an article about it called Baby Boomers. And they was talking about the dangers of the NBA and the dangers of signing these players. And CBS Sports all their sports writers were told and programmed to put a battery in their back and sabotage and write all negatively about Kwame before he even played a game. The politics was all in place before he even played a game. They dogged him out because they knew he was going to be the number one pick in the NBA draft as a rookie coming in from high school. He was dogged. He was dogged out because they didn't want that to be the example. We can't have all these players come from high school and start coming out. So they were scared. And CBS Sports has a deal with the NCAA and all those sports writers that work for them, all the beat writers. They're writing about it in all their articles. And they dog Kwame Brown. They dogged the NBA. They wrote negatively about it and what kind of impact it says about the educational system. Kids need education and they're taking a low education. Not to mention, nobody mentioned this guy's grades or anything. Or He was on the honor roll. He had a, a scholarship to go to college. Nope. NBA has the money. So they're going to go. So they wrote negatively about Kwame Brown. None of this was said. When LeBron James came out of high school and went to the NBA, it was all roses. But I'm going to tell you, and that was just two years later. So 
<laughs> I'm going to tell you. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. Not comparing Kwame Brown to LeBron. I'm just saying. The narrative. Okay? Narratives. Now, let's get to it. Because people need to know something. And I need people to hear this clearly. When they were going to draft Kwame Brown, Michael Jordan, them, they had the number one pick. Kwame Brown was not what they wanted. They didn't want the number one pick. They were going to trade it away. So this is why, why uh, Kwame Brown's agent was told. Like, we're drafting him, but we're going to trade him for Elton Brand. Because that was the plan. That was the only reason they were drafting Kwame Brown was to trade him for Elton Brand. Here's why that deal never went down. Michael Jordan wasn't going to give up anything extra to the Chicago Bulls, who was also playing both sides of the fence. They're all in negotiations with the Clippers for the draft rights of Tyson Chandler. And Tim, they was like, man, hey, we finna get um, Kwame Brown, the number one pick in the draft. Elton Brand, his contract was up in 2003. But they moved Elton Brand immediately because they were like, he's going to want money. And we don't want to pay Elton Brand that kind of money. And we're not going to win. He's a great player, but we're not winning with Elton. Elton Brand played two years with the Chicago Bulls. I know it feels like more, right? Elton Brand was 20 and 10 in two seasons. That's what he averaged with the Bulls. So Michael Jordan, definitely, he get a 20 and 10 guy playing on the doggone Wizards. From the draft, give up the number one draft pick, and you got a guy who you already know what they can do. Oh, that's what you want. That's why they got rid of Jawan Howard. This was all his move. Like, I can get rid of Jawan Howard. I can get this Elton Brand guy in here who's way more tough on the boards. I feel he's a better player than Jawan Howard. Jawan Howard, he was mad. He's like, he's played like a franchise player, and he's just a role player. And we got too many of those guys on the team. So Mike got rid of all them bad contracts. Now, he kept on his UNC buddy, Hubert Davis, because he was from UNC. So he kept him on the team. <laughs> and that's what Mike's problem was. He, he, he had his dedication to UNC, plus... It's got to be his way and no other way. And when you don't have the fortitude to listen to other people who might have some input that makes sense with the talent on the court, that's what was Michael's problem. Michael could run everything else in the front office. It was on the court is where they failed. Now, how did this failure happen? Kwame Brown trade fell down because Michael wasn't going to add anything extra because he was not assured that Elton Brand was going to sign with the Wizards in 2003 when it was time for his extension. If they got him and they wanted to do an extension, they wasn't sure that he was going to stay with Washington. So he don't want to look like a fool having the number one draft pick and you trade him for a guy who's not going to resign with you. So he had indications that Elton's don't want to play here. He don't want to play in Washington. So that's why the deal didn't go through. The, the deal was rejected. It was on the table and it was still being negotiated. But it looked like it was going to be done. They gave up, I think, Brian Skinner or somebody like that. The Bulls got Skinner and uh, somebody named, I think, Brian Skinner. I think that was his name. They, the Bulls got him, and they got Tyson Chandler for Elton Brand. So they got an extra player out the deal that Washington wasn't willing to do and wasn't going to go down there. 
So that's done. So now they are committed to Kwame Brown. Kwame Brown comes in. He's a 18 year old kid, 18 going on 19. He's saying everything right. He's not really doing anything wrong. Here's where the disconnect comes in at. Michael Jordan gets out there. Now he got to make his number one pick stick. They're still on the phones trying to work to see if anybody wants to pick him up. Here's the problem. Not a lot of teams are keen on developing a 17-year-old player, a 17, 18-year-old kid out of high school. Because that's going to take, they feel a 17-year-old kid like Kobe. Kobe came in in 17, 18. People just forget his first three years. He really wasn't playing. People don't remember that. So Kobe wasn't really playing. He was just coming in off the bench while he's watching Iverson and all these guys perform. He's out of high school and they got him on the bench because they want him to soak up some knowledge, see what's actually going on and, you know, Feel the game, you know, learn and expand, get stronger, you know, learn not to make certain mistakes out on the court. So all of that. All of that. Comes in at a certain period in time. You know, but for Kwame, they took Kwame, man. They started making him work two a days and all these things. But Jordan ain't thinking about Kwame Brown. He thinking about him. He went through a whole training camp for himself to come out there and play with them. Now, the first year, Kwame Brown barely played. He ain't played the first week of the season, I don't think. Then he came out there. He's an 18-year-old kid. How y'all putting all the weight on an 18-year-old kid like he's supposed to just take over the entire team and lead them to the championship? It's his first year. He's learning the game. His problem was actually playing with Michael. Playing with Michael was just as worse because A. Pollen saw the way Michael Jordan was talking to players, period. And he couldn't believe Michael Jordan talked like that because this is not the Michael Jordan he had in his office. Michael was talking to them. And they were like, Mike, you a part owner. You can't talk to players like that. Man, this mf know what the F he doing. Man, pass him the effing ball. I mean, Michael was losing it like that. Cussing people out, telling people they sucked. And this was before this went on. Abe was shocked. He never knew. He was like, man, did I get Michael Jordan or Eddie Murphy? <laughs> Mike was, they was pushing and pushing and pushing Kwame Brown. This is what was going on. They were trying to trade him numerous times, but everybody was criticizing Mike. And this is why, I don't know if Kwame know, but this is why he was pushing Kwame so hard. The reason why they was pushing him so hard, and they really was doing that once he got his guys in there. See, the first year, Mike came in with broke ribs. So Mike was slowed down a little bit. He couldn't really do what he was doing. He was getting in shape, and he was in great shape. But he broke his ribs. Ron Artest broke his ribs. So when he came back, he, was, he really wasn't 100%. His ribs didn't really heal all the way. So when he was playing out there, it was intense. Like really intense. So... It was crazy. But here's why they kept Kwame Brown. Jordan rejected a lot of trades for Kwame. He kept Kwame. And this is why he kept Kwame Brown. Because he wanted to prove people wrong. The media was all saying, Michael Jordan, he, he drafted this guy. He doesn't know what he's doing. 
Even Charles Barkley criticized him, which led to them having a huge fallout where they didn't speak for like 10 years because he talked about him and how he ran things in Washington. And he got mad at Barkley. Michael Jordan was hearing everybody say, Jordan don't know what he's doing. Jordan don't know what he's doing. Jordan wanted to prove I had the number one pick in the draft and I'm going to turn him into something. Oh, you just wait. This was another challenge for Mike. There were trade offers for Kwame Brown and Michael Jordan was turning them down. And trying to get Kwame stronger. We're going to get him strong. We're going to get him up there. And we got to work on his footwork. And they got this dude doing two a days. Burning him out. <laughs> I mean, they got him doing. Uh, they got him doing uh, weightlifting. Working out. Then he got to do thousand shots. Shooting drills. Get your shots up. Working them out. <laughs> then they like, all right, go sit down. Like, then we're going to put you in the game, you know, and trying to get him in the game. This is a young kid that's trying to learn the game of basketball at the highest level and, and you know, and figure it out. Y'all rushing him like right in the wall. <laughs> then the next year, Michael just got rid of, that's why Rip was there. Him and Rip bumped heads all the time. When they played him and Rip, Rip like, man, what is going on? What am I doing wrong? Rip couldn't believe it because playing with Michael is not, that is not going to work for Rip. Playing with Michael is going to hinder you. And what happened when they traded they got real far. They had Cliff Robinson. As soon as they traded and got ripped, Joe Dumars called Michael Jordan and said, Hey, Mike, uh, I know you're not happy with Rip Hamilton. And they wanted to get rid of Stackhouse. They feel Stack, is, Stack was a good player for Detroit, but he's not what they needed playing with Chauncey Billups. They feel... If they had a, the right type of two guard, like a Reggie Miller type, somebody who goes through picks and weaves, that's going to open up and move the defense around. Stack kind of stands around a little bit and go one-on-one -on -one too much. You already got Chauncey for that. <laughs> you need a counterpart. And when they played Detroit and he saw the way Rip was running on the court and running Detroit through them picks, Joe Dumas knew. He said... Because everybody's hearing the problems. Rip unhappy there. He made a trade. Soon as they trade him, the Pistons go to the Eastern Conference Finals. First, as soon as they traded him, we had Cliff Robinson on the team. Detroit had no business, but they had the pieces there. They only needed one more piece. And that was Rashad Wallace. I mean, Rashid. When they got Rashid Wallace and Ben Wallace, <laughs> that was all they needed. So next season, when they made that trade for Sheed, that's all they needed to get over the top. They needed that one piece. And that's championships. But Mike had a talent right there in Rip and didn't recognize it because he's so focused on the way he want to run things. So he started bringing in the good old boys. He bring in Patrick Ewing, who hated Kwame Brown. Patrick Ewing hated Kwame Brown. Oakley couldn't stand him. You know, Oakley didn't like nobody. Oak just was pushing people, bullying and Hey, get out of my way and smoking stogies and talking with Mike. So Mike got his crew with him, you know, to drink yak and to play cards on the road. Yeah, Pat. <laughs> Man, remember in 93 when you tried that elbow on me? You know, and <laughs> you got him over there with a, with a young kid who's trying to learn the path. He's only, what, 19, 20 years old. You know, so he's got to figure it out. And nobody's there to really guide him and say, you know what? I'm going to work with you, young man. You know, your Heidi White was the only one on the team that was like that. That was like solid. But Pat is more like, you know, like whatever. So they was going to trade him. They was ready to get rid of Kwame Brown. And he was, I don't know if he know this, but he was getting traded for, because he had a great season. 
after they got rid of like his third year. He was great that year. He had a really solid season. And I'm like, oh, man, he's finally playing minutes. And he's getting the ball. What happened? They were trying to offer a trade for him. For, and this is what was happening. Elton Brand, you was going to be in Charlotte, Kwame, quicker than you did go to Charlotte. Charlotte was going through a transition. They was getting ready to move to New Orleans. So they had Elton, um, Elton Campbell on there, Big Easy. So Big Easy was, uh, they was going to make a trade and get Kwame Brown on the team. They was trying to get a whole new change, new faces over and when they go make the move to New Orleans. So you was going to be in New Orleans and one of the first players in there when they made that transition over. But I think either Elton, they turned it down, something didn't work out. I don't know how it fell apart, but I know, I think he went to Seattle and got traded to the uh, Supersonics. But yeah, they was going to trade you to, uh, for the Big Easy. Because they was like, we're not going to resign him because Mike was gone. Once Mike got through playing, he thought he was going back to the front office. A. Pollard said, nah, -uh. <laughs> you gone. So they had to pay Mike a lump sum of money because Mike took $1 million pay salary every year he played. And he brought in Charles Oakley. Oakley wasn't going to contribute nothing at that time. I mean, <laughs> Oak Tree was done. Oak was just there because he's Mike's guy. Doug Collins was brought in because he was Mike's guy. I mean, I think about it. If you Kwame Brown, you come in, you got one coach who's a first-time NBA coach your first year. Now you got Doug Collins the next year. <laughs> you got Doug Collins, and he's coming in changing things. So you've had two coaches right off the bat. And Doug ain't going to say nothing to Michael. That's who got him the job. Johnny Bach was already there, but that's Doug's guy from the Chicago Bulls. Johnny Bach, <laughs> defensive coordinator. And Patrick Ewing just, they already just written Kwame off as lazy. You couldn't do nothing, you just lazy. Oh, he lazy. You see him? Yeah, he lazy. What about him over there? All oh, lazy. Man, you too young to be tired. They didn't ran this boy into the ground. <laughs> Man. So if y'all don't understand what I'm saying right now. Or y'all think it's lies. All I'm saying is ask Kwame Brown. And if you hear Kwame, please do a video and let them know right away if I've told any lie in this video whatsoever. Because that's exactly what went down. Now, all these people talk. I never hear them talk about Eddie Curry the way they talk about Kwame Brown. And Eddie Curry was in high school and he was, Kwame Brown played way better than him. Kwame Brown has played better than Tristan Kardashian. <laughs> right now, Tristan Kardashian getting out, getting three rebounds a damn game. People wondering what the hell he's still doing in the league. Boy getting three rebounds a damn game. Sad, boy. That's real sad. And another thing. And another thing, and I want to say that, there's people trying to call me right now. I'm sending them a message. Another thing I want to get to, like I said, follow the page, like everything, like the button, subscribe, 
Don't write everything off without going in there and getting the information. Now, the big thing I want to tell you guys is why no sportscaster was giving you this. They get paid millions of dollars <laughs> to sit on national TV and they don't tell you any of this stuff. All the stuff I just said to you, you can basically probably find. Nine, about 80% of it you can find and they should know it. They in the locker rooms. They know every damn thing. They know everybody. Why they not doing their jobs? Why they not giving you research? You see how I gave you the, the budgets, the salary budgets? Why they not doing that? They could easily research that. They know what everybody was making. They know this was bigger than that. But they have to use Kwame Brown because he was the number one pick and Michael Jordan did it. He drafted him. So because of that, to try to prove Michael Jordan wasn't a good GM, he drafted Kwame Brown. That's how they want to play the game. So make sure you follow his channel too. Kwame Brown, Bus Life. Follow this page, Carcino for Life. My Patreon is Carcino for Life. My Cash App is Carcino. You know, I don't have the super chat. So you can hit me up on the Cash App if you want to do that. I appreciate the love and support either way. And By all means, <clears throat> all means, keep up with everything that's going on. Hit that notification bell. We about. We talked about the elephant in the room. They still protected me, uh, MJ so much, the guy they love so much. No one asks, well, dang, if... MJ was supposed to trade him from Elton Brand, which makes a whole lot of sense. Uh, and that didn't happen. Could MJ be the type of guy that bench this guy and put him through shit? And maybe that has something to do with something. Could, could we now look at this whole thing from a whole different perspective? Oh, no, you can't. None of the reporters can look at the team that he put together the second year when he put together the old boys club again of all old dudes, no offense, around a young lion. You can't be objective, uh, nothing like that, huh, sports reporters.